Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm not exactly sure how to get started with this video. Um, this is really just a video that's trying to explain the electronics that I'm hoping to get coordinated and working in the robot. Those of you who have been following along know that I'm trying to build a robot that's capable of sorting out pennies by date. And I'm going to use a, an artificial intelligence program, an AI or machine learning, in order to do that. Hopefully, at the end of this project, I will have a machine that is capable of finding pennies to add to my own coin collection. On the desk here in front of me, you can see what I'm trying to do for the guts and the brains of this machine. I have two stepper motors, two limit switches, two cameras, and a power supply that's outputting five volts on both rails of that breadboard. I have a cooling fan running over here off of the five volt rail. And I also have a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of memory. In addition, those of you who've seen my previous videos will recognize this part as the camera studio that I talked about. And that contains not only a camera, but a string of LED lights that can be used to light the pennies from different angles. Now the challenge of all this is trying to get all of this coordinated and with these temporary breadboards, the connections are actually pretty loose. So oftentimes we're not making good solid connections and that's causing problems with the programming. So what I intend to do in this video is just show you the progress that I've made in trying to get all of this coordinated. As we talked about in the last video, we have two stepper motors, one that controls the coin grabber that rotates the coins into position between these two cameras. We know where this stepper motor is going to end up because we can turn it on and off using a limit switch here. Same thing with the coin sorter mechanism. We have 11 positions that we could potentially drop coins into, and we need to know exactly where this stepper motor is at all times. We're going to do that by setting a limit switch that will tell this to turn off when it is in an exact position. From there, we'll be able to rotate it by a number of steps to get to any of the other positions in the robot. Without further ado, I think I'm just going to show what I've accomplished so far and then try to explain some of the challenges that I've faced. In this program that we have running on the Raspberry Pi, you can see that we have uh, a main loop here that's listening for the limit switch states. And if I run this program, both stepper motors are now running. And down further in the code here, what this while loop is doing is actually listening for the state of these limit switches. And the idea was to say, if one of these limit switches is pressed, then you can stop just one of these stepper motors. So you can see that one limit switch goes with one stepper motor. So this one will go with that one, that one will go with that one. I think that's the way it works. We'll see here in a second. But as we activate a limit switch, if I press on one of these, you can see that this uh, stepper motor is now stopped and this one continues to turn. The problem that I'm seeing here is that the cooling fan over here is now stopped also, which means that I think that the power on the power rail, this five volt rail has dropped to a point where this motor is no longer able to run. But if I press the other limit switch, you can see that that stepper motor now stops and the cooling fan now starts up again. So you can see that when I try to activate everything all together and coordinate these things, I get the stepper motors turning very slowly, which means that they have a very low voltage. The cooling fan doesn't have enough voltage to stay running, and the LEDs flicker at a very low intensity. But as I click the limit switches here, you can see that this stepper motor picked up speed, which means that it has greater voltage. The cooling fan still doesn't have enough voltage to run, and the LEDs are still at a low intensity. But as I stop that last stepper motor, you can see that everything else starts working again. So I really need to find a way to, to, to maintain the voltage on all these buses, even when I have everything running at once here. And that's gonna be a challenge for me. If anyone has any suggestions about how, what power supplies to use to maintain voltage to all of these components at once, even when I'm using them all at the same time, that would be really helpful to me. My online research hasn't really turned up much that will allow all of this to run together. 
And I'm okay spending a little money to buy better equipment here, but I'm just not sure what to buy because this is my really my first experience with Raspberry Pi and trying to get these components to work. So uh, anyone with more experience, I'm all ears. The other thing I wanted to show you very quickly was that I can also get the cameras to work somewhat, but that has also created its own challenges. I'm gonna comment out everything except the cameras. The other thing that I'm facing with the Raspberry Pi is that if I unplug these for any reason and plug them back in, they could have completely different indexes. And I have not figured out a way to programmatically figure out which camera is which yet. And I'd also like to learn that. So if anyone has any insight on how to do that, that would be helpful. The other challenge is that when I take a picture, sometimes the USB bus goes down. I'm no longer able to use the keyboard and mouse, and I also can't use the other camera. So if I take a picture here, the USB bus will go down. It turns off the, the USB keyboard and mouse, and the Python program crashes and won't allow me to take a picture with the other. But now that I've commented everything out except the two cameras, let's run this and just see what happens. It may be exactly what I just said, but <laughs> let's see how it goes. So here again, you're just getting a bunch of errors that's saying that the camera is, the camera index is out of range. I'm not very good with Linux, so I'm struggling here a little bit, but I know I have this command over here that will allow me to show the indexes of all of the components that are connected to the USB bus. Um, so let's run that and see what I get. Okay, so you can see that these USB cameras have changed their index. So it's saying video four and video one. I'm gonna try changing that in the code and just see if we can get some pictures out. So we'll change that to one and four, save it. And we'll run that again and see if we can actually get a picture. Good. So obviously it's out of focus, but you can see that the top camera uh, was able to take a picture here. And I have to hit any key to continue, so I'll just hit the space bar. And we'll see if this crashes out. But what it should do is activate the second camera and take another picture, and it should be bottom camera. But again, this timed out and shows errors. When I typed those errors into Google, I couldn't find anything that showed up, but when I typed them into ChatGPT, it said that I might have a loose connection somewhere. So in the next video, what I plan on doing is soldering all of these components down to the board so that I get good solid connections. And hopefully that will help a little bit. I know that I'm still gonna have power issues on these rails. And again, I'm looking for any feedback from you all. Anyone who has more experience with Raspberry Pi power issues, I'd really like to hear your comments down below. So please help me out if you can. But for now, that's my two cents. Thanks for watching, everyone.